Well, joining us live now, presidential candidate, Congressman Ron Paul. Congressman, thank you very much for being here. We appreciate your time tonight. Yeah, you're welcome. So tell us your reaction to the results tonight. Already, where there's talk about uh, whether this would be a devastating loss to Mitt Romney if he won Michigan, but not by a big enough margin. We're unable to call it. But your <laughs> thoughts as somebody who's in this race? Well, yeah, there is a lot of talk about it, but, uh, you know, the votes aren't all counted yet. Uh, I, it looks like uh, Romney will win it, and uh, he'll be able to uh, use that to his benefit, especially, you know, with the, uh, when he had in Arizona. Of course, from my own viewpoint, uh, I uh, certainly wished we had been able to do better, but we're not shocked because we knew exactly what the numbers were. But we did get a lot of enthusiasm for those who did come out. But, you know, I would uh, like to, you know, uh, when you're in politics, you look for the positive things. You know, yesterday we had a fantastic poll came out. So I'm doing the best against the president, you know, at least tied for the top. When, uh, when you take my message and look at independents and Democrats, I do very, very well. So if the Democrats, uh, I mean, if the Republicans are looking for somebody that has to get independent and Democratic votes, uh, somebody like Santorum doesn't do that uh, as well. So I, I think uh, uh, we'll concentrate on that and we're going to concentrate on the delegate selection. And uh, this is where we're working, you know, in the, uh, in the caucus state, and we're going to continue to do this uh, and see what happens next Tuesday. Congressman Paul, you have focused on caucus states, and you have been on that delegate hunt, as you mentioned. You're in Virginia, and you're the only one on the ballot uh, besides Mitt Romney in Virginia. Uh, we have the, up on the screen the delegate uh, numbers so far. Do you regret your decision to spend time in Michigan? It appears tonight you're, you're going to come out of there with, with zero delegates. Well, no, I, I don't re regret it. I mean, uh, we harbor our money carefully and spend it cautiously. And, uh, and you know, we, you make those decisions. I think that uh, you always wished you could have done better. But uh, I think the, the message is the message is so important and that other people hear it. And we are going to continue. You know, there's more than the television. There's the Internet. And when people see this, it helps us in the caucus states because everything that happens in all the rallies, when we get 4,000 people out to a rally in Michigan, uh, everybody knows this in the caucus states. So it, it is a very positive thing for us. So we don't look at this as strictly a negative in a conventional way. You know, you've heard these stories, Congressman, about uh, these theories that you're somehow working in collusion with the Romney campaign. You have said that you've talked to them about what debates you would do and what, what debates you wouldn't yeah. do. How much does your son's political future factor into your maneuvers in this race? Well, we don't talk about it and we don't think about it. And I, I have my job and he has his job. And that just doesn't seem to be appropriate. I have to see how well I can do in this campaign. But the last thing I've done is talk to Mitt Romney. Besides, he wouldn't talk to me about that. I mean, that's, that's just fiction. And it's mostly been promoted by somebody, I guess, who's uh, super, super involved in, in conspiracy theories. Uh, that's Santorum's uh, uh, doing that. But it doesn't make any sense at all, you know, that that, that would be the case. And uh, my son can take care of himself. He doesn't need me to make deals for him. That's the last thing in the world that uh, I would be thinking about doing. Congressman Paul, you, uh, you are showing a, a lead against President Obama right now in a head-to-head -head matchup that Rasmussen Reports put out. Uh, Mitt Romney was shown as tied. Rick Santorum was shown as a couple points behind. But as matched up against the other GOP candidates, according to the, to the Real Clear Politics uh, dot com average of all polls, you're fourth. Uh, you're down at around 12 percent, and you are significantly behind the other front runners, Mitt Romney and Rick Santorum. Uh, why should Republican voters at this point, the ones who are not in your corner, your, your supporters are very fervent, but the ones who are not in your corner, yeah. believe that you can no, overcome I don't, I don't that deficit? I don't, I don't think uh, those numbers hold up when you look at absolute delegate counts. And, uh, and it's going to be a, a month or two before you know about how the delegate process works. So even, even if I come in third or fourth, there are some states where I'm third or fourth that we think we're going to win the majority vote, uh, you know, of delegates, the majority of the delegates. So that's a long way to go. So we have to convince people that, uh, you know, uh, 
I, as the candidate, would do better than the rest because the philosophy of liberty in the Constitution and the emphasis on spending cuts and different foreign policy and talking about the Federal Reserve, it's appealing to independents, the young people who have never been in politics, the people that are, many Democrats uh, are, are coming over. So the de Republicans are always claiming, we've we got to find somebody that can win. But uh, if, they, if, that's, if they're truthful about that, then they ought to look more carefully at what I'm talking about. Congressman Paul? From a beautiful, uh, the Commonwealth of Virginia, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. It looked nice and cozy there, didn't it? It did, with that fire. Newt Gingrich bypassing the primaries in Michigan.